Good afternoon and welcome to Discernment Radio. I'm your host, Danielle Pai. And I'm your host, Cindy Riedenauer. We are Discernment Radio, people and topics to enhance your life. Today we are joined by Jim Heiler. Jim is the president of the Manatee Community Concert Band and also serves on the board of directors. The mission of the band is to bring the community together by providing an opportunity for dedicated musicians to share their talents, while also encouraging young musicians to develop and pursue the love of musical performance. The topic today is joining the band, bringing the community together through music. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Jim, can you tell us how the Manatee Community Concert Band got started? Yes. Um... Actually, the Manatee Community Concert Band has a very long, deep, and uh, rich history. It actually originated in 1894 and was originally named the Bradentown Brass Band. And this band played concerts on Main Street in downtown Bradenton along the Manatee River. Ever since then, Bradenton has continued to have a band performing free concerts for our communities. Only the name has changed. We are currently called Manatee Community Concert Band and continue to perform uh, free concerts for our communities of Bradenton, Sarasota area. So what kind of music do you play? Currently, uh, we're performing actually a pretty wide variety of music. Uh, We're playing the standard marches. We're playing Broadway and movie hits. We're playing timeless swing classics pop, jazz, and even classical music. That's a lot of variety. (laughs) Wow, to keep all that straight. So how many members make up the band? And I guess, are they all volunteers? Yes, all of our uh, band members are volunteers. We currently have a band membership ranging from 50 to 70, depending on the season. Uh, We have quite a few snowbirds that have been members of our band for the last several years. And they are welcome. We love having our snowbirds uh, perform with us. The members all come from different walks of life. We have professionals, but we also have uh, professional musicians in the band. Our collective uh, history has about 2,100 years of musical experience. The expertise level of the members vary from some who have recently taken up their instrument as a hobby since their retirement, to some who have been professional musicians for over 40 years. Included are some members who have composed and arranged instrumental and choral music, and some that have actually directed their own bands. I would think that would be a really good opportunity, particularly for new and budding musicians, to learn from this like wealth of wisdom. We actually welcome that, Um, and our Band members love to be like mentors to kind of help new members joining the band uh, with learning music and with um, style and those kinds of things that a lot of the band members are so versed in. So how long does a person usually stay? Do they stay for years with you? Yes, that's actually the most uh, common denominator is years. Um We've had snowbirds that have come in during the season for the last five, six, seven years. Uh, We have band members that have been in the band as long as 10 or 12 years now. And uh, fortunately, they're helping us with the board of directors with that vast experience. Wow. So how do you actually manage all these people logistically? Isn't that hard to keep everybody straight who's coming and going and the snowbirds and all that? Yeah, that's actually part of our board of directors' uh, responsibility. Uh, We have a person that's involved in email addresses, uh, phone numbers for the band. They fill out a new membership form when they sign up as a band member, and uh, we re-update our band membership every year through one of our board members that is active in helping us keep all that straight. And we we do active email outs, like for announcements for the um, order in which we're going to rehearse our music and all those kinds of things. So do you have an average age or a range of ages? We are, currently we have a couple of uh, high school students playing with us that are uh, from uh, Lakewood High School. 
uh, Lakewood Ranch High School, and we also have uh, many retirees in the band. Uh, I would probably say the average age is somewhere between 55 and 60. Um, we have several members that are uh, less than 40, and um, we have more that are between the ages of 40 and 55. Uh, I would say probably uh, 50% of our band is over 55. And do you have any one instrument that's more weighted than another that people play more than the other kinds? Uh, actually, that's okay. It's, that's a part of uh, having a band like this. Uh, we try to uh, balance the band as best we can, but that's actually part of rehearsal. If we've got a few more uh, trombones, then we do French horns. I play the French horn. Uh, they can kind of overpower the French horns. Uh, so that's part of rehearsal. The uh, trombones have to learn to play a little bit softly, if mm -hmm. they're more than us, than the French horns. Uh, the other way around, if we have more French horns than we do clarinets, for instance, then we, the French horns have to learn how to play a little bit more softly. And that's part of rehearsal. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's part of having a volunteered band like this. Mm -hmm. There are some seasons um, you're going to have 14 trumpets. And the next season you may be down to seven trumpets because it's volunteers and people move and get jobs out of town and all those kinds of things that we can't uh, prepare for. But we can accomplish those things through rehearsal. That's why rehearsal is so important. I'm not sure, but based on her questioning, I think Cindy might want to join your band. <laughs> but what a great intergenerational opportunity for, for people to learn and to bring the community together. I think that's pretty neat to have high school up through retirees. That's such a great yeah, community. Um, social connection. Mm -hmm. I love that. So you not only serve on the board of directors, but you also play the French horn. Can you tell us a bit about your musical journey and why you joined the band? Sure. I first uh, started um, playing the French horn in middle school for a short season there and kind of fell in love with the instrument. Uh, started participating in sports after that, so uh, kind of dropped out of band activities. But in 1998, uh, we were members at First United Methodist Church here in Florida, in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And one of my uh, good friends was Mark Dean, who was a music director there at First United Methodist Church in Tarpon Springs, and he was interested in starting a an orchestra for the church. He was a, a trombonist and was like a professional trombonist, also played the keyboard and many other instruments, phenomenal vocalist. But we were talking uh, some, and he said, you know, I'd really like to start an orchestra. we got eight or ten people here in the church that are instrumentalists. What do you think about that? I said, I think that'd be pretty cool so I said, you know what, if you really get this off the ground, I'll pick up my French horn again, go take lessons, and we'll uh, kick this uh, orchestra off the ground. So that's basically what we did. We uh, started the uh, uh, First United Methodist Church Orchestra there in Tarpon Springs, and we had that orchestra going for quite a few years. Uh, then I moved, um, and we were playing mostly every Sunday, mainly special events, Christmas and Easter. And uh, then we moved to North Carolina. Uh, my work took me to North Carolina. So then I joined uh, several other uh, musical groups during that time. I played in the uh, Western Carolina University Community Orchestra. And I played in the Mud Creek Baptist Church Church Orchestra. And I played in Haywood Community Band out of Waynesville, North Carolina, for quite a few years. And then we moved back to Florida again, uh, once again due to work, and my son, who lives here in Parrish, and uh, joined the um, Manatee Community Concert Band as soon as I arrived. Wow, and do you mind telling people what you do for work outside of the band? Because I find it interesting. We talked <laughs> a little before. Yes. Uh, I am a, a part-time uh, hospice physician, uh, PRN medical director for uh, Tidewell Hospice. 
On your website, it mentions that one of the Manatee Community Concert Band's mission is to encourage musical pursuits in young performers. And you already mentioned that you have some young performers. So could you go into that a little bit more about how you provide encouragement for them and how do you encourage them to pursue a musical career? Uh, yes. Uh, we are really emphasize the importance of sponsoring uh, young musicians. We actually do this in four ways this year, but we're always looking for opportunities to expand on that possibility. The first way is we have uh, young artists, conductors, who conduct some of our music at the performances. This year during our Christmas season, we had a young artist named Nicholas Lewis that actually conducted a couple of our pieces of music oh, and nice. rehearsed amazing. with us, which was pretty nice. We encourage our high school students to play in our uh, band, and as stated, we've got two Lakewood Ranch high school students currently playing in the band. We offer scholarships for young musicians. Nice. Currently, we're offering a scholarship through Braden River High School and their Bradenton Big Band Brawl Jazz Festival coming up at the end of this month. And we are also collaborating with uh, Southeast High School for our uh, February performance. Uh, we are having the uh, Southeast High School Chamber Orchestra be our opening act, and they're also playing with us uh, for a couple of the arrangements. And I have a picture of their poster here. Oh, okay, we're going to make sure we... Uh... Yeah. Get that information nice. on the website when we publish it. Very nice. And just as a side note, and as a physician, you might you might know this, or uh, but I was reading that when you play a musical instrument, it lights up all the areas of your brain, and it actually some recent studies say it helps with memory. And I can tell you, playing the piano badly, I don't play <laughs> well, but I've noticed a difference in my work performance. I just feel like I'm more creative. My problem solving is better. So not just um, from the social and the enjoyment of playing, I would think that there's just such a wealth of benefits of, of doing something like this. Yes, we have uh, discovered through our research that playing a, a musical instrument is so... Uh, helpful in so many different ways. One of the major ways that you'll probably hear about and read about is if you are scheduled to get dementia, and it seems to be hereditary and many other things, it will postpone and delay when the dementia will occur. And for some people, it'll even eliminate the possibility of them even getting dementia. Yes. It's a very That's powerful... It runs in my family, so I'm like, yeah. I'm doing everything I can do. Uh, same for me <laughs> as well. And uh, these are good motivation, ma motivational factors uh, for learning a musical instrument. And it's, um, that's one of the things that our Manatee Community Concert Band offers. You can learn a musical instrument and then play in a group and enjoy the pleasure of performance and uh, meeting needs in the community for people who enjoy live music. Oh, that's wonderful. So now what kind of commitment is involved with joining the band? Uh, our, the main commitment is our rehearsals and our uh, performances. Uh, we're currently uh, rehearsing at Southeast High School on Tuesday night at 6.45 p.m., and we have 10 to 12 concerts per season. Uh, we expect our musicians to come to all rehearsals and, of course, all concerts, and we also expect our musicians to learn their music outside of rehearsals so that during rehearsals, we can fine-tune everything and learn to play together as a band. Right. That's not their time to practice. That's the time to bring it together. Exactly. <laughs> gotcha. And and what, how long is season? The uh, rehearsal season starts in September. Okay. And the uh, first performance is usually the first week of November. Okay. And how do you choose the venues that you play at? We have had uh, venues in the past that we have relationships uh, like, for instance, we have played at several uh, retirement centers and places like that. We have relationships with uh, Tideview Estates here in Parrish. We have relationships with Colony Cove. We have relationships with Harbor Isles, Anna Maria. Mm -hmm. And uh, our, we choose first our main concert venues, which are four main venues a year. 
and we play these four main concert venues per year at all these other retirement places. So, uh, so we first choose our main concert venue. This year, our main concert venue has mainly been at Neal Performing Arts Centers at State College of Florida uh, here in Bradenton campus. And the, it, with the exception of the Southeast High School venue, that's our fourth. Um, three of the venues have been there at, at Neal, but the fourth venue is at Southeast High School this February. And then we call around to other venues like Tyview Estates and Colony Cove. Would you like us to come? You know, when would you like us? We can come on this date, and we give them dates. And then that's how that is chosen. Uh, this year so far, we have done a venue at um, the first first venue was at Neal Performing Arts Center with uh, Bay Corral. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second venue was at University Town Mall mm -hmm. uh, at the shopping center there uh, for Christmas. And then we did a concert at uh, Harbor Isles out in Anna Maria uh, subdivision out there. And then that venue, the, that main venue, we played at the Neal Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. We've got Colony Cove concert coming up mm -hmm. in February. That's our next venue and along with the Southeast High School venue. So are all these open to the public, or are any of them closed to just these neighborhoods? Or They're open to the public. They're all open oh. to the public. Um, uh, of course, the neighborhoods tend to fill up the place, so mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to get a seat, you better come early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but all of them are open to the public. Uh, mainly it is for the retirees within the community, so that they do not have the inconvenience of going to the Neal Performing Arts Center or one of the other places like Southeast High School uh, to hear live music. What has been the community response to your performances? The community response has been entirely favorable and a bit humbling. Uh, because we offer free concerts, we rely upon the donations of the support of the people in the audience to help us offset our expenses of buying music and renting rehearsal, uh, renting performing places like Neil Performing Arts Center and equipment, renting equipment and things that we need to do in order to have a, a good band season. It's been very humbling and that so far in the last couple of seasons we have had more than 8,500 people wow. to attend our concerts <laughs> each great. season. Wow. So uh, the... And I want to thank the community because they have been supportive of us and they have been great with their donations and it's allowed us to carry on at the quality of performance that we would like to perform at by buying new music and uh, other things that we need to do with that money. Absolutely. Now, you, you mentioned some venues. Can you tell us about the next event you have coming up? Right. The next event coming up Southeast High School, where we're doing our Blockbusters for Band concert. And that's going to be February the 24th at 7 p.m. That will be introduced by the Southeast High School Chamber Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing some numbers with the uh, Chamber Orchestra at the end at, as, in a combined performance. Uh, just prior to that, we're going to be offering a concert at Colony Cove as well. The next concert coming up after that one will be our final concert of the year, which is a spring concert. And we are uh, going to offer that at three different venues. The first venue is at Harbor Isles Complex out in uh, Anna Maria Island. Second venue is at the Neil Performing Arts Center again. That's on March the 23rd at 7 o'clock. And we will also have an intro performance of some variety then. And then the third performance with that group of music will be at the Horseshoe Cove subdivision in Bradenton. 
Okay, so we want to make sure that everybody knows the very next concert is at Southeast High School in the auditorium, Sunday, February 24th at 7 p.m., and we will make sure to have a link on our website so everybody knows uh, where to go and uh, how to find you. And how long are the concerts? They're usually about an hour long. Okay. Uh, the maximum length they ever are is usually like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, and where can people go to learn more about the band? Please uh, pull us up on manaticoncertband.org. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Discernment Radio. If you like the show, please click to follow.